Josh absolutely loves this stuff on his potatoes when we have our fresh garden potatoes. And I gotta say, it's got a lot of stuff in here. I don't know what it is. We've got so much great garlic to use from the garden that I'm gonna see if I can replace this with a homemade version. This is just a small percentage of the garlic that we grew this year and pulled out of the garden. And today we're gonna to be turning this great garlic into garlic powder and garlic salt. It is actually really easy and you are going to enjoy this process. You're gonna be surprised how easy this is. Our first step of this project is the hardest step of all, and that's getting the garlic peeled. We really want well-peeled garlic, but there's some tricks. First of all, this is a hard neck variety that we grew. It grows really well up here. There's about four varieties that we grow of hard neck garlic. And this is the basket that we have of just kind of all the miscellaneous garlics. The remainder of the garlic is either already back planted in the ground for next year's harvest, or it's braided by variety. So this is just a mix. I'm just starting by breaking up the cloves into pieces. Now, you can do this with as much or as little garlic as you want. You can do as little as one clove of garlic and turn it into some really, really amazing garlic salt. You don't need a lot, but you can use whatever kind of garlic you have on hand. And if you have to go to the store to get garlic, you can use whatever they have there too. Now we're really quickly going to just take off the stem end there, the root end, and we're gonna crunch each one. And then we are going to drop that into a large glass jar. All right, now it's time to shake your jar vigorously for about 30 seconds. Now we're gonna dump them out onto a cookie sheet or a dehydrator tray. Now, this isn't gonna peel them perfectly, but it is gonna get you a long ways ahead. And pull off the skins. Look at that. Make sure you get all the little bits of silver skin off of the garlic so you have a completely clean clove. Doing it this way makes the garlic peeling part go so much faster. I've tried all different methods and this is the best method that I've found, especially if you're doing a batch this size, not too big um, and not too small. This is just right. As we go, we're gonna spread our garlic out on to our dehydrator tray that's been lined either with some parchment paper or with the, um, the silicone tray that comes with it so that we can keep it from falling through the cracks of the regular tray. If you don't have a dehydrator, that's okay. You can also just use your oven. I've done it like that a lot of times and it works out really, really well. Just put this on a parchment paper lined cookie sheet instead. full tray of peeled garlic in just a few minutes. That was really easy. And that was the hardest part of this entire thing. Now we're gonna slide this into a dehydrator at about 125 degrees. That's about 52 degrees Celsius for maybe 10, maybe 12 hours. Start checking it after eight. What we're looking for is completely crispy, crumbly and crunchable. You don't want any liquid at all left in this garlic. If you're using the oven, then just slide it in at the lowest setting that you possibly have on your oven. If you can get down to 125 degrees, 
that would be great, but 150 degrees will work also. If you're using your oven, I highly suggest that you go ahead and chop this into smaller bits right now so that it works much more quickly. But in the dehydrator, you can leave the big bits and the thick bits right around the edges where it's gonna get the most airflow and you will end up with a great product. Wow, look at that, you guys. <laughs> that is very, very well dried. You can see these are like completely crispy. I can snap them, but some of these big guys, I think I'd have to take a hammer to them in order to break them. So this is great. These dried for about 18 hours to get to this point. You could, of course, drastically reduce that time if you wanted to chop it really small to start. It just depends on where you have the time. Now, the next step is to take this dried garlic and to turn it into our garlic powder. We're gonna use a coffee grinder. Now, the best recommendation is to have a coffee grinder that is completely set aside just for spices, things like herbs and garlic and anything else that has a lot of strong flavor. But sometimes we just don't have it in the budget to grab another coffee grinder. And so I found a trick so that I can use our just regular coffee coffee grinder. And that is before and after I use it for a spice, I make sure I clean it. You can clean it just by running any sort of hard grain through it for a few seconds. You could use rice, uncooked rice. This is hard wheat berries right here. You could use whatever you had on hand, as long as it's nice and hard, because that's really going to clean that up. You don't want your garlic powder to taste like coffee, and you definitely don't want your coffee to taste like garlic powder. That should give it a nice clean. Now, a little bit of wheat flour is not going to bother your garlic powder at all, unless you have somebody who's gluten-free in your house, in which case use a grain that they can handle because there will be a little bit of that powder left in there. Something like a rice would be ideal for that. Now we're gonna fill up that coffee grinder with our dried garlic and grind it on fine. Personally, I like to do a second time just to be absolutely sure, but it has obviously turned into a nice fine powder. So let's do it one more time. The smell of this is already amazing. This is not your store-bought garlic powder, let me tell you. And it's really important to do this part, the powdering part, kind of in small batches because any spice that has been powdered is gonna lose its potency really quickly. So you wanna do this in this nice small batch, but oh my goodness, you guys, I wish you could smell this because this is not like anything you're gonna buy at the store. Look at this. Can you see how beautiful this is? There's just a few little clumps in there that just come right out, but look at that beautiful, fine powder. Now, obviously you could put it a little coarser if you're looking for something a little bit coarser, I like it fine like that, but oh, it smells phenomenal. You could stop right here. You could put this in a jar, a little shaker bottle, and just use it as is, just as garlic powder. But if you want to make a garlic salt, then you have to take the next step. This is where it gets fun. By the way, make sure before you put this back on the coffee shelf, you clean it again, doing the exact same thing we did before we use the garlic. Otherwise, the other coffee drinker in your life might not be really happy with you. <laughs> Turning garlic powder into garlic salt is incredibly easy. You're gonna wonder why you haven't done this before. All you're gonna need is salt, your garlic powder, and you have the option of seasoning it with an herb. I'm gonna use some parsley. Uh, so Josh's special garlic salt looks the same as it did before. Now, today I'm using a Redmond's Real Salt. Use a good quality salt, something with some minerals in it so it's actually helping your health. You're going to need 
three parts of salt for every part of garlic powder you use. Now, a part can be as much or as little as you want it. Today, I'm using a quarter cup for my part, but if you only want a tablespoon, you can do that too. You'll just end up with about a quarter cup total at the end. Well, this is the three parts of salt right into a bowl. And then I wanna get that one part of garlic powder. Now, one of the benefits of this is that the salt is gonna to help to wick out any moisture that might be in here, which you will unlock a little bit, so it'll get a little clumpy. And it'll pull it away from the garlic powder, which will make it store a little bit better. It'll make it shape a lot easier. And I'm gonna do one part of this parsley. This is just beautifully dried parsley right out of the garden this year. Isn't that look beautiful? It smells really good too. And you guys, that is how easy this is. We're just gonna mix this up and stick it into a shaker spice bottle. Look at that. And it smells absolutely amazing. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you what, that store-bought stuff does not smell anything like this. I'm gonna make potatoes the way Josh really likes it. And I'm going to put some of the store-bought stuff on one and some of this on the other one and see which Josh likes. If he thinks that this is a good substitute for his store-bought garlic salt. To prepare the potatoes, I'm going to take five of our red potatoes we grew this summer in the garden. I'm gonna wash them really thoroughly and I'm gonna put them in a pot of water bring them to a boil and let them boil for about 15 minutes. Then I'm going to remove them from the boiling water and place them individually on a cookie sheet. I'm gonna use a fork and smash them and cover them with a little bit of butter and some garlic salt. slide these into the oven just to toast them up a little bit. Let them cook until they just start to show the slightest bits of brown on the top and then pop them right out of the oven. Make sure that butter is thoroughly melted. These smell really good. <laughs> we have our trial potatoes. These are the ones with the homemade garlic salt. These are the ones with the, the store-bought garlic salt. So I'm gonna call Josh down and see if he approves of my homemade enough that I can get rid of his store-bought, who knows what's really in here and it's not really that flavorful anymore, garlic salt. <laughs> Hey, what kind of surprise you got for me here? <laughs> All right, so I've been trying to recreate your store-bought garlic salt with something that's homemade. Wow, very <laughs> With something cool. that's homemade and doesn't involve all the questionable ingredients. I love it. Plus it's fresh. So Even better. And it's from our garlic and our parsley and healthy salt. But I didn't feel like I should throw out yours until you gave the thumbs up since this <laughs> is your thing. Here I have potatoes that this one has the store-bought on it. Okay, and this one has the homemade. Now you can tell the homemade because you can really see that parsley. Yeah, you can. It's like nice and fresh. Better value already. <laughs> it is better value. It's not anemic parsley. It might be a little hot. It's fresh out of the oven. Well, okay. good old Lowry's. Wow. Very good. Okay, are you just saying that because we're on camera and you're being really nice to me? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's does very... it Does it taste more garlicky? Because it smells phenomenally more garlicky. It's definitely more garlicky. Gar garlicky. Uh-huh. Like the parsley. And I would say it could use a little more salt. A little more salt. Yep. Okay. But All right. It's so excellent. Maybe up the parts of the salt. Well, I got a little more in that bite. Okay. It's a very, it's a fantastic <laughs> replacement. So you'd be I'll happy if I had this on the shelf instead of this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Good. I'm sold. Another one down. Another store bought item with all sorts of questionable ingredients off our shelves. Another homemade one, homegrown one there. I think that's a success. 
job. <laughs> All right, try it out, you guys. It's really easy and it's really delicious. Hey, if you like making your own spice blends and putting healthy seasonings in your cabinet, then check out this video here on making your own onion powder at home.